great American North is a place where, some might say, people hold a unique outlook on life. Oh yeah, sure. I know what some of your big city no bra wear and hairy legged women libbers might say. If you've never been there, you might be surprised to find a culture of hospitality. Help yourself to some coffee and bars. But mostly you'll find a people holding steady to values seated deep in decency and faith. And that's why we Lutherans use grape Kool-Aid for the blood of Christ. And what's more American than a ritualistic exploitation of young women being judged by a panel of gawkers? So we should probably get the young girls in here then. Drop Dead Gorgeous, the 1999 mockumentary about a small town beauty pageant. Never heard of it? Well, that doesn't really surprise me. It's only available on DVD from the internet, it's not on Blu-ray, and I couldn't even find it from any of the big download stores. And I couldn't really find it any other way either. Pirate. 1999 was a year of like a bajillion movies, and this one was really just a blue note within a black symphony. Mockumentaries work best when they're inspired by real events and real culture. I've spent a lot of time in Wisconsin and Minnesota, and I can safely say that our northern culture is exaggerated beautifully here. Yeah, sure. Frida, sure. Uh, she was the oldest living Luther, and now she's dead as a doornail. Every year, every damn year, I tell them, take down the goddamn Frida sign, you lazy sons of bitches. Beyond that, it mirrors the growing trend of violent competitiveness within our youth sports and performing arts. My mom gave me this 9 mil for my 13th birthday. Yeah, I always remember what she wrote in the card. Jesus loves winners. One of the best parts about a good fake documentary is how the story depends on the dialogue creating a caricature of real life while also maintaining a level of absurdity that allows us to disconnect from reality. They remade my belly with skin from my butt. So the main plot revolves around trailer park dwelling and lovable Amber Atkins being the character you want to win a teen beauty pageant. Unfortunately, she is up against the pageant organizer's daughter, who just happened to come of age the same year. I can't say much good about Miss Richards as an actress, but to play a conniving and completely fake business just seems natural for her. Well, it teaches you what's really important in life, and it has the power to change you in ways you've never dreamed of. Kirstie Alley is the show organizer, who plays the role of a squeaky clean housewife on the outside, but who is a controlling and devious egomaniac on the inside. Hello, Tony. And yes, Denise Richards is Rebecca Lehman, the obvious ringer to get the crown. A lot of the first act is spent meeting the other competitors in the contest. These other kids are played by the likes of Amy Adams and the late Brittany Murphy. But even some of the more unknown people playing the other competitors also do a great job. I run track and uh, right here, I'm the new president of the Lutheran Sisterhood Gun Club. <laughs> yeah, love that one. And early into the movie, we are introduced to the underlying danger of being in any beauty pageant. Being f***ing killed. Yep, killing kids is wrong, and that's some of the best things about this movie. It's ability to be so wrong and feel so right. Well, it doesn't really feel right, it still feels wrong, you just laugh at it anyway. More so when other people aren't around. Pederasts, beating the mentally handicapped, teenage anorexia, and good old-fashioned male chauvinism. Beautiful as a whore's ass today, ah huh, boys? It's like seeing a buffet filled with fried Oreos and steamed dolphin meat. You really just shouldn't go there. But you do. And then you find out that the dolphin can also be a fish, and you're not actually eating flipper. You're still eating fried Oreos, though. Am I the only one who's listening? We soon get to meet the judges of the contest. The pharmacist, John Doe. Never been around young girls. I mean, even if I was, I mean, why, why would I want to be, you know? And that's really why you're asking, right? Hardware store owner Howard Vilms. Are you excited? Oh, you bet. We're happier than the day Hanky got acquitted. And this lady, who never speaks. Not once. 
So as the movie draws closer to the pageant, you get to know little Amber more. We see her working in a funeral home and practicing her tap dancing at the same time. We become invested in her character by painting her as a humble do-gooder trying to make a life for herself despite her lower class origins. The more time we spend around Amber, the more we see the danger looming around the pageant. There's the mysterious hunting accident involving her crush. So, you know, Brett just got shot in the head. He did? Well, hunting's dangerous. And a sudden explosion at Amber's trailer. Now, Amber wasn't there when the explosion occurred, but her mother gets seriously fucked up. Okay, this is quite possibly the most beautiful burn injury I've ever seen. If I could ever recreate the... What the hell is wrong with me today? Seems like I'm forgetting something else, too. Ah, well. The rehearsals begin and there's a dark tone overshadowing the... Oh, there it is. At this point, it should be obvious that all this violence against the pageant contestants is only leading to the inevitable. how I would have written it. The pageant itself steps away from the dialogue-based humor most of the movie has been basing itself around in order to let good old-fashioned side gags take the wheel. This involves patriotic hats, unfinished dance props, and most importantly, the talent competition. Now, Amber's routine comes last, so I'm going to show it first. And her stunt double does a pretty amazing job of tap dancing. But that's not really the highlight of the contest. I've already mentioned that I could really care less about Denise Richards' existence most of the time, but I think that it takes a special kind of crazy to do something as beautifully blasphemous as what I'm about to show you. Take it away, Denny. shit of pun intended awesomeness. That's all I've got to say about this. You can make your own judgments. And after a performance like that, who couldn't guess who takes home the crown? I know who's doing the Harold. I know who's doing the That's it. I know who's doing That's it. it. You no, no, shut no, 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 your goddamn mouth! You shut your goddamn mouth! You shut your goddamn mouth! You shut your goddamn It's not Kirsten Dunst. Oh, you know, it's my daughter, Rebecca Ann Levy! I really praise movies that are willing to build up the underdog and show the competition for the unsavory characters that they are. Then despite all the rooting that you do for the good guy, they still lose. All just to show us that it's all about the effort that you put into a competition. Thankfully, this isn't one of those movies. No, this is the kind of movie where the meanie face competition gets to explode and burn. Every inch of her down to her fake boobs bursting under the pressure of Hey, is that Stan Lee trying to hold back that lady? Of course, the Green Goblin showed up, and he pumpkin bombed the hell out of the place. So this is an interesting development. A youth pageant, the good girl loses, only to have the winner incapacitated, leaving the good girl to wear the burnt tiara. Seems like I've seen this. Congratulations, Lisa. You're the new Little Miss Springfield. Here's your scepter. <laughs> it's pretty weird the first time you watch this movie and realize that at this point there's 20 minutes left in the movie. But this is so you can see Amber go to the state competition and allow the movie to fulfill its contractual obligation of being a movie that's mostly about Kirsten Dunst. And you are Mount Rolls American Teen Princess? Funny you don't look dead. <laughs> <laughs> If seeing a beauty queen meet her demise in Fuego upon a parade float didn't satisfy your need for sadistic humor at the expense of catty and conceited mini-divas, then you'll love the resolution of the state competition. Ever leave meat out on the back porch too long and then decide that it's emanating a good kind of nauseating smell and decide to serve it up anyway? Oh, I don't eat shellfish. Ma always says don't eat anything that can carry its house around with it. Today, a beauty pageant turned ugly. <coughs> Salmonella dysentery outbreak now traced to improperly refrigerated shellfish. 
I don't know what to say about this, other than it's possibly the best argument I can make for the validity of cinematic regurgitation. Literally speaking, of course, I'm not here to comment on the validity of the current remake craze that's going on. So that's actually all I'm going to show you from this one. There's a couple of more scenes involving the Nationals part of the competition, and then they have a nice little prologue showing you what happens to all the main characters from the story. But unlike my previous movie reviews, there's a pretty good chance that more than a few of you out there actually haven't seen this one. So I'm going to leave a little bit on the plate for you. Drop Dead Gorgeous, just a little dust speck of a movie swept under the rug along with a bunch of other crap from a year that produced all kinds of vacuumable movies. Like I said before, a movie like this is given strength by its dialogue and the actors who deliver it. While most of the cast of this movie are hardly A-listers, they all do a really great job of seeming tangible while also keeping a glaze of ridiculousness on the surface. So if your local video store happens to have this one tucked away somewhere, I highly recommend giving it a whirl. And remember, you don't have to change who you are just to find your true beauty. You only have to see beautiful people vomit to realize that the same ugliness exists within us all. This is Topher from Movie Misperception saying you may not like it, but that doesn't mean that I won't not too. It starts stopping, it starts stopping, it starts stopping.